Reputed mobster Harry Alleman wants out, out from solitary confinement at least, where he's been now for more than a month at the Federal Correctional Center in Marion, Illinois. Alleman's lawyer, Raymond J. Smith, has protested to a federal judge that Alleman is being held in solitary without good reason. He was placed there after reports that the mob had grown upset with him and put out a contract. Alleman and another man were convicted May 5th for their roles in a home invasion ring. He's appealing that conviction, which resulted in a 30-year sentence. 67-year-old Roy Williams, head of the powerful Teamsters Union, guilty on all counts. Williams is the third Teamsters president to be convicted by a federal jury within the past 25 years. 59-year-old Alan Dorfman of suburban Deerfield, guilty on all counts. Dorfman, a Chicago insurance executive and former consultant to the Teamsters Pension Fund, allegedly has close ties to the crime syndicate. 53-year-old Joseph Joey the Clown Lombardo, Lombardo of Chicago, guilty on all counts. Lombardo has been identified by federal investigators as a high-ranking member of the Chicago Crime Syndicate. Lombardo, who had never been convicted of a felony until today, reportedly is the chief of labor union operations for the mob. 45-year-old Thomas O'Malley, a former Chicago policeman, guilty on all counts. O'Malley, a Mount Prospect resident, is a trucking company executive and Teamsters Pension Fund trustee. And 65-year-old Andrew Amos Massa of Chicago, a former pension fund trustee, guilty on all counts. Massa and the other four defendants face up to 55 years in prison. The sentencing has been set for February the 10th. What Douglas Warren, head of the organized and crime strike force in Chicago, was chief the prosecutor in the case, spoke to reporters after the verdicts were announced. Costs. I think the message from this jury is quite clear, and that at least in this district, that, that conduct charged in the indictment when proven by the government will not be tolerated. The jury of six men and six women reached its verdict at the beginning of the fifth day of deliberations. During 26 hours of deliberations, the jury reviewed many of the wiretap conversations that formed the backbone of the government's case. The convictions culminated a two-month trial and a 14-month investigation in which FBI agents gathered more than 2,000 reels of tape during an elaborate electronic surveillance of Dorfman's Chicago insurance office. Fifty-three wiretap conversations involving the defendants were played in court. In one of the conversations that the government considered very damaging, defendant Roy Williams is heard describing his commitment to Senator Cannon. In the conversation with William Webb, the government's key but reluctant witness, Williams discusses the status of a trucking deregulation bill. So I sent the lawyers out there to find out what in the hell was wrong because I got whistled in by the senator yeah. to find out what was wrong and uh, of course I know what he'd done with deregulations. That's right. He put them on the back burner. That's exactly right. And then was willing to take on a fight with Kennedy. And he did. <laughs> yeah, and, and he, he got he... that bill out of Kennedy's hand. That's right. He did, he did everything that he said. I'm not, not going to forget it because we sat right there and committed ourselves. In another tape, Dorfman recalled Williams' conversation with Cannon at a meeting in which the bribe offer was allegedly made. But Roy Williams just had a came right off and says, you've got the practice, I don't worry about it. If you I practice, you all, you've got to commit to practice. And I turned to Roy, because he verified it the other day. Roy says, well, you know, I'm not going to commit to that. Well, 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 the government contended that the defendants offered Cannon exclusive rights to a choice parcel of Las Vegas land. In return, the Justice Department claimed the defendants wanted Cannon to help scuttle a trucking deregulation bill. Cannon was never charged with any crime, and the deregulation bill eventually passed Congress with Cannon's support. Cannon is always denied any wrongdoing. They never... Uh tried to convey any bribe to me or n never made any offers to me, and which I testified to in the trial. Good evening. Topping our news tonight, the mysterious disappearance of mobster Tony Spilotro, one of the most powerful figures in organized crime whose criminal empire reaches from Chicago to Los Angeles. Bill Lagatuda joins us now with the story. Bill? Anthony Spilotro was head man for the Chicago mob out west, including Southern California. Whether he's hiding, or was the victim of a Jimmy Hoffa-style hit? We don't know. All we do know is that he vanished without a trace. 
Anthony Tony the Ant Spilotro ran the Chicago mob's multi-million dollar crime business in Las Vegas. Saturday in Chicago, Tony Spilotro and his brother Michael disappear without a trace. Their car is found abandoned at a motel near the airport. No one saw them. No signs of foul play. Tony Spilotro has been charged with a long list of crimes, including several murders. No major convictions. He was due back in Vegas Monday to be retried on federal racketeering charges. In California in 1981, this state report warned of infiltration by the Chicago mob, head local man Spilotro, saying he is muscling in on burglaries, bookmaking, and loan sharking. There were charges. Spilotro tried to set up a loan sharking operation out of this poker parlor in Bell. Those who failed to pay would be beaten. Informants in Vegas helped put Spilotro's boss in prison. Spilotro may have been blamed, or he may have been planning to talk. Disappearance then, a way to silence or punish him? They will go to any extreme, including murder, to ensure that what they want done uh, is done. And whether it's an innocent or an intentional screw-up, uh, it's just not allowed. They made the point several years ago when Spilotro's right-hand man had his car blown up. He survived the blast and is now hiding here in L.A. As far as the Chicago mob's influence here in California, experts say is not as great as it was five years ago. Too many Chicago crime figures are on trial, in jail, or have disappeared into thin air, like Tony Spilotro. Mob boss Albert Caesar Taco was sentenced today to 200 years in prison and fined $2 million. He was convicted last December of racketeering and extortion. And during sentencing, the judge told Taco, quote, the purpose is not to punish you, the purpose is to rid you from society. His name is Rocky Infelice, and prosecutors say that he is one of the most ruthless mob bosses in Chicago. But tonight, Rocky Infelice is out of business. A judge has sentenced him to 63 years in prison. The scene at federal court was a wild one. Antoinette Giancana, the woman known as the Mafia Princess, disrupted the sentencing with an unusual show of support for Infelice. Channel 2's mob watcher John Drummond has the story. At 71, mob boss Rocky Infelice will in all likelihood spend the rest of his life in prison. Convicted of racketeering and conspiracy to commit murder, Infelice was sentenced today to 63 years in jail. Infelice, who did not take the stand during his five-month trial, made a statement before he was sentenced, calling Judge Ann Williams a pro-government judge. Said Infelice, I think we were fighting three prosecutors here, and you were a fourth. One of Infelice's supporters in the courtroom was Antoinette Giancana, the Mafia princess, who applauded Rocky's remarks. I completely agreed with Rocky, number one. Number two, under my freedom of speech, feel as though the judge was overwhelmed with this case. And I think that she is truly, and I'm going to get probably chastised for this, um, pro-government. Prosecutor Mitch Mars, in calling for a stiff sentence, described Infelice and his two co-defendants violent parasites, career criminals, and murderers. Said Mars, they are brutal and vicious. They have no regard for the sanctity of human life. It'll be up to the Bureau of Prisons to determine which jail the free men will go to. However, Infelice's lawyer, Pat Tuitt, who says his client has a heart condition, urged that Infelice be sent to the Federal Medical Center in Rochester, Minnesota. John Drummond, Channel 2 News. As for the other defendants, Louis Marino was sentenced to 28 years in prison, and Robert Bellavia received a sentence of 30 years. For 20 years, Chris Spina worked for Streets and Sands. This afternoon, he suspended, accused of stealing from taxpayers, and even chauffeuring around an alleged mob boss while collecting overtime. Spina has been under investigation for two years. He is a foreman of laborers in the Streets and Sand Yard in the First Ward. There in the middle is Joey the Clown Lombardo talking to Channel 2's John Drummond earlier this year. Among other things, the city accuses Chris Spina of serving as a chauffeur from Lombardo, all the while collecting $30 an hour in overtime. No criminal charges yet, but they could be forthcoming.